In lesson two, we're going to be taking a look at slicing solids um, and analyzing what are called cross sections by cutting into the shapes. So if you're doing this lesson in class, um, we used Play-Doh. If you have Play-Doh at home or clay, you can mold some different solids so that you can cut them and actually look at the um, cross sections. So what the cross section is, is when you take a slice. So if you were to take this, mold this cylinder and then slice it and then open it up and look at the shape along the slice, the two dimensional shape along the slice. So like a triangle, a rectangle, a circle, those types of things. So if you have clay or something like that, you can do that. Um, here are some examples of what cross sections would look like. So this green thing is the slice. So it's called a plane, but imagine just taking a slice out. Okay, that plane, what shape is created, okay, from that slice. If you open it up, this blue part is the two-dimensional shape created. So in this case, going perpendicular to the base, you created a rectangular or a rectangle cross section, where if we cut the cylinder parallel to the base, then we ended up with a circle. So see, you know, if you have clay or something, or even if you had like a zucchini or a cucumber, something like that, you could cut it at various different angles and see what types of shapes were created. And then I'm going to see if I can share um, a digital applet too. Um, let's see. So right here, so we can kind of play around with this and see what, so here's the plane going through and you can see the cross section cutting on the three dimensional over here. And then here's the 2D cross section shape that's actually being, whoops, being created here. Okay. So as we kind of move this plane through, whoops. through the shape, you can kind of see. So if we go here, we get like a pentagon. So you can see we can get a pentagonal cross section. Okay, we get parallel to the base, get that square. Okay, and just kind of move all around there to get different types of cross sections. Let's see if we can rotate it and look at it this way. Okay, then you can kind of see that plane going through there. So all of those, so th that slice created is the, um, is what's called the cross section. And you can see just by rotating your slice that that changes kind of what's happening. So a lot of different cross sections possible. Okay. Um, on page 213, which is your summary, I would just add in um, the definition of cross section. So it's kind of like halfway down the page, you'll see these pictures. So you can point out the cross sections are those shaded pieces for the cylinder. And then I just highlighted the, the plane in case you don't know what plane means, but the plane is that um, two dimensional flat surface that just slices through. So feel free to add color there. Um, then again, if you were in class, we reviewed a couple um terms for different solids that you've learned in, in earlier grades. Um, they are actually at the top of page 213, the definitions are. And then here's some pictures of them. Um, but so a sphere, so remembering that a sphere is the set of all points three-dimensionally from a center point. So here's the center, okay, and if you kind of went in all directions, that's a sphere. Prisms, Okay, so these four shapes right here are prisms. They have two bases that are congruent. And then all of their sides or their lateral faces are rectangles. Okay, so you see these two triangular bases. The shapes that connect those are all rectangles. Or here you see the pentagons. Okay, so those faces um, are what connect them. And then a, a cylinder just has a circular base. So it's basically the same thing as a prism, just the base is defined as a circle. Then pyramids, okay, have one base and they, they go to a point at the top. 
Okay, so all of their faces, okay, so you've got the base and then the faces coming out of the base are all triangles. Okay, and this point up here is called the apex um, or the vertex. And then you see these triangular faces here versus rectangular on the prisms. And then a cone, just a circular base going up to a point. All right, um, and then we, we talked about cross sections for each of those shapes, okay? So going through here and just kind of cutting them, thinking if we cut them, so forming those with clay, cutting through them, okay, looking at all those cross sections. Um, obviously, you know, if you go parallel to the base, you're going to keep getting circular cross sections or pentagonal cross sections or here triangular, okay, square. And then you can kind of cut across them and then get some other shapes, okay, which are going to be hard to look at on the screen. So if you have, um, if you have clay or Play-Doh that you can create these and cut through them, that would be a fantastic um, way to model that for yourself. Then let's take a look at, um, what if we took a look at coins? Okay, so thinking of coins as almost cross sections, okay, just flat surfaces. So what if we stacked the same coin on top of itself? So if we took all pennies and we just stacked them, or we took all dimes and we just stacked them. Okay, what shape would you make? What if you took them in decreasing sizes? So you started with a quarter, then you went to a nickel, then you put a dime, then you put a penny. Okay, what shape are you creating then? So if you have coins um, and you're having a hard time thinking about it, go grab those coins and do it. So if we were stacking the same size, we'd be getting cylinders. Okay, so a bunch of cylinders here because all the cross sections would stay the same size. They're all nickels or they're all pennies or they're all quarters. Um, and if we started stacking smaller and smaller sizes, it would almost start to form a cone. Okay, if we could continue on with smaller and smaller coin sizes, they would just keep getting smaller and smaller until they disappeared at that point, making a cone. So let's take a look at um, the cross sections on page 211. So here's a bunch of cross sections. If we were to stack these up, what shapes would they be making? So can you determine, okay, from these cross sections, what three-dimensional shape will be formed? So see if you can think about that and guess what you think the three-dimensional shape will be, then come back and I'll show you. All right, so... Um, I felt like for me, this one was pretty easy to tell and this one was pretty easy to tell, but this one had me going, what? So this one, um, as you stack the triangles up, so thinking a triangular pyramid, okay? So getting smaller and smaller and smaller up until a point. So starting at a triangle, smaller and smaller until you get to a point, triangular pyramid. This one, circles that are getting smaller both ways. So a sphere, okay, or a ball. But what in the world is this one? So if you figured this one out, props to you. Okay, that one was a cube, okay, but on its point. Okay, so if you can see this, here's the cube. Okay, it was just a cube on its point is what happened when you put all those cross sections together. So I could not see that. Um, congrats if you could. But then you see um, the pyramid here. So if you could keep stacking it up, okay, or the circles stacking to um, that sphere. Um, so here's a couple of questions to look at. So how are the cross sections in this lesson different from the two-dimensional ones we looked at in lesson one? So in lesson one, we were rotating the cross sections, or not the cross sections, but we were rotating those 2D shapes, where in this one, it's cut through the entire solid from anywhere. 
Okay, so the 2D shapes was half the solid so that we could rotate it and it was symmetrical where cross sections can be cut from anywhere. Okay, with just a straight slice. Um, and then what kinds of real world applications do we have for cross sections? So this I thought was interesting um, is that you see it a lot in medicine. So with CAT scans, MRIs, PET scans, that gives doctors um, a look into the cross sections of your brain um, or I don't think it's supposed to be lunch or a lung. This was supposed to say lung. Apparently I was hungry when I wrote this, okay? Or a lung um, or an injury and so they can look at the cross sections. And then that's also kind of how they've predicted what body parts look like three-dimensionally, okay? Is looking at some of the cross sections. Now, obviously they can look on cadavers and see those, um, but they can see if somebody's um, body parts are enlarged or out of shape, misshapen, okay? Based on looking at the, cross sections from those CAT scans or those different scans to help them figure out a prognosis. All right, so here's the lesson two summary. So again, we talked through in earlier grades what shapes we did, um, looking at the cross section. So you should have already highlighted this. Okay, remember a cross section is just formed by a plane and that plane can just cut through anywhere. So it's going to give you various different shapes in a cylinder, like you could get a rectangle if you're going perpendicular to the base, a circle if you're going parallel to the base, and then slanted ones give you a variety of other shapes. Um, and so here's an example with uh, some cheese slices. So if you were um, at a Super Bowl party or something and you saw this, and you saw these little slices, you would know if you stacked those up that the that this cheese originally came as a cylinder and then just was cut parallel to its base to get those slices. Or if you saw that the cheese slices were getting smaller and larger, okay, maybe that cheese um, was a cheese ball that they cut apart. But so analyzing cross sections and thinking about putting them back together helps us get back to the three-dimensional shape that we started with.